Hi all, I have a very important landmark game of Leela Chess to show you. This was the classic 395 ID, which according to some tests like STC uh, tests, strategic test suite, uh, is still one of the better versions. And Ron Langvild uh, recommended this game on the Leela Chess forums. And I'm pretty sure he's the 26th ICCF Correspondence World Chess Champion. So he knows a thing or two about high level accuracy games, brilliant correspondence games. So this is his game choice. And I hope to show some of the major themes which make it very, very interesting. Uh, and may, you know, games like this may show the way for much more decisive results in even the highest level correspondence chess. It might revitalize uh, a lot of uh, the engine assisted correspondence chess, which has in recent years had a sort of increasing number of draws. So this game shows uh, there's still a lot of dynamic potential in the game, even for that form of correspondence chess. So we see knight c3 here, knight f6. The Verasov attack is usually with bishop g5. Here we see bishop f4. So this is quite a, a fun system as well. So bishop f4, black here plays a6. We have e3, e6, knight f3, knight bd7, bishop e2. Bishop e7. Now white plays knight e5. Leela chess takes on e5. Bishop takes. Both sides castle. b5. Now black has the luxury of some extra pawn mobility here because that knight c3 move is blocking the c pawn. So white is actually losing a bit of the advantage of playing white by this next move. It's a sort of admission of. A misplaced knight in a way because black's going to play c5 and now white wants to play c3 so kind of wasting a bit of time there and now interestingly uh Lila chess plays the move c4 now quite often we consider such moves as a little bit double-edged if they release the tension on the center but there have been a lot of magnus colson games where he's done exactly the same thing to install assets for end games you know advanced pawn assets for end games in particular so it is interesting, knight d2, bishop d7, rook e1, bishop c6, bishop f3, rook c8, e4. And now another perk of c4, it's restraining the c3 pawn. So that can be actually attacked now as a fixed target with b4. We see queen c1, a5, queen c2. And now leader plays d takes e4. This is a very nifty idea to grab that d5 square in style because after knight takes e4, Leela doesn't play knight takes e4. That would still give white an advantage. For example, there's a pressure on h7. If black has to weaken like, uh, the dark squares here, this is okay for white. Uh, there's a better way of playing this, which is knight d7. So still celebrating this d5 square. We have bishop f4, knight b6, so i that d5 square, h3, bishop d5, a3, and black now just installs an, uh, a more dangerous asset for endgames, b3. This could be a dangerous pass pawn later, deep into endgames. Queen c1, queen d7, bishop g5, which provokes a uh, kind of weakness f6 but is it that exploitable bishop f4 I and mean, now we have knight a4 which puts white under pressure on the queen side the passive looking rook b1 and now queen c6 creating more pressure on the center and on e4 now here interestingly stockfish 9 and this is a decent time control game by the way this is like 300 minutes uh, and three second increments a very decent time control and some engines might think this is a reasonable move this next move uh, so white play uh, stockfish 9 played queen e3 
and I was actually I actually raised this game uh, yesterday because I was quite excited about it even yesterday I've been brewing <laughs> this game thinking about it why this game is significant and is there an adjective to describe this kind of move which there's a there's a kind of weakness of the last move in that b2 is neglected and the thing is you might think well so <laughs> this 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 isn't this just a little bit of trivia that there's a weakness for the last move here or, it, or is it more than trivia uh, I, I think it's called the butterfly effect when something apparently trivial happens <laughs> a butterfly flaps its wings and has dramatic implications later but maybe that's that's a bit too far because black already has these advanced uh, queenside pawns and I I think some of the the stronger engines will find Queen E3 a little bit on the suspect side without knowing the full impact of it so guess what black does play here in this position okay black does play knight takes b2 it creates a very very interesting scenario just just from a computer science perspective even that we have here uh, protected past pawns now protected past pawns uh, how we estimate their danger uh, humans generally especially GM's love protected past pawns they know they've got great potential every step they make is going to be increasingly dangerous for the opponent so grandmasters in particular will often consider such sacrifices and I actually experienced a horrible rapid play game uh, not so long ago in the super rapid against uh, Pert uh, I think Nicholas Pert one of one of the Pert brothers who in a rapid game had connected pass pawns on the Queen's side, and I literally couldn't do anything is that the case here that these connected pass pawns now which are emerging uh, will eventually paralyze whites it might not be immediate and this is why Queenie free might have been seen as a reasonable candidate move because the brute force approach really needs a lot of depth uh, thinking and maybe this is just too far down the line to see the danger of what we humans can sometimes see you know these dangers ahead of time intuitively but uh, the brute force engines might suffer in, in, in that respect and not be able to estimate protected past pawns in particular as easily as we can visually uh, detect but Leela is a neural network and many people you know believe that our brains are just like advanced neural networks so the pattern recognition here of recognizing this pattern of protected past pawns is is very very interesting we've got a protected uh, and dangerous connected past pawns there's quite a few adjectives there um now bef so before we start from this position let me let me just show uh no let's 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 just carry on from this position and you can see the variations the detailed variations in in the pgn uh, link i'll give you in the description and in the pinned comment of this video uh so why also there was some justification basically for queen e3 earlier for tactically stopping or discouraging e5 as well but you'll see that in the variations so let's go on from this position we've got these protected dangerous past pawns which are difficult for brute force engines sometimes to estimate properly so we see here the move bishop g3 bishop e7 and it's interesting what Leela does here basically to me it's like putting a real emphasis to maximize the uh, impact of these uh, basically to try and trade some stuff off uh, we see rook f8 which is already uh, okay on the e-file we see now bishop h5 rook ed8 knight d2 a3 so the pass pawns take uh, another step forward so getting even more dangerous now we see bishop g4 and now bishop f8 offering e6 because there's an upside for losing the e6 pawn here which is this e-file and the potential to get rid of the rooks if the rooks can be got rid of then it's kind of underlining even more the protected past pawns 
yeah we're going into a sort of <laughs> if you're a fan of the spaghetti westerns the immense clarity of the spaghetti westerns you, there was no there was no complications it was the gunfighters against each other in barren desert we're going to end up in like the barren desert soon rook takes e6 but here to get that barren desert we see the the move uh queen b7 first queen a1 rook a8 rook e2 now queen b5 and this is heading for the barren desert because it wants Leela wants to just exchange off rooks now to really maximize the dangers of these protected past pawns uh, so we see knight f1 rook e8 the queen is supporting this move to try and trade off rooks bishop f5 is played uh, now here bishop f7 was played which does potentially mean rook takes and queen takes f5 d5 now uh, let's have a look at this variation if white did play rook takes and we have the rooks coming off uh, does this really favor the protective past pawns well yes <laughs> because this kind of situation is more than unpleasant for white you can see that uh, white's just losing this end up being a piece down uh, so we see now uh, the move d5 um, on move 39 uh, some other alternatives rook d2 uh, just loses the bishop uh, h4 uh, we just loses the bishop basically yeah there's a there's a problem here with the bishop so okay uh, so that's why d5 cuts the queen away from the bishop rook takes rook takes and now actually leader plays bishop g6 uh, on queen takes d5 even this is okay actually even with the skewer it's okay for black this position is also uh, a clear advantage a big advantage for black so it's the position so good already with these protected past pawns check was played uh, okay so if uh, bishop takes g6 instead hg knight d2 queen takes d5 this position of queen b5 this is going to be much better for black so anyway bishop e6 was played bishop e6 check and now the desperate rook b2 yeah it's just a sign saying okay at the moment it's a tactical uh tactically justified because a b there's the queen takes that's extinguished and yeah black's advantage is 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 mammoth by this by this point white uh actually is in a desperate state now plays d6 on rook e2 you can see that b2 and then b1 is just simply crashing through so d6 is played uh giving up the rook and after rook a2 the game was just uh, adjudicated here as a win for black uh as a continuation example say bishop takes yeah it's just it's just all over basically uh it's just it's just totally gone yeah it's just it's simple to convert that position so the game ended here so this does bring in a philosophical interest as well about the whole nature of how incremental de depth search brute force chess engines do have the horizon effect especially in particular in this example with respect to protected past pawns uh, it's a bit like that Superman film where the supercomputer which could defend itself um, just couldn't estimate the uh, opponent's threat and was blown up you know sometimes uh, computers they can calculate very very well but there there is still this uh, blind spot sometimes this horizon effect as they they term it and the protected past pawn feature of, of chess is one of those things which 
it's experience which tells us to look out for that pattern basically experienced humans will look out for patterns like past pawns and especially protected past pawns as this game shows so a great choice from Ron Nangvild so uh, a correspondence world chess champion recommended this game on the amazing uh, forums of Leela Chess for games wanting comments uh, so if you also have Leela Chess games you want commented post to that uh, Leela Chess forum and maybe me or some other video annotators will pick them up so I really enjoyed this one and this shows that even ID395 it has played some mighty games okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much